And as a lot of you guys know, one thing that I really like on any tractor or piece of equipment that I own is a good sturdy pulling point on the front of the machine. These are great for a number of reasons. If you have to pull something else out of the mud, if you have to get rescued out of the mud, or you know, someday if the machine's not functional or whatever and needs to be dragged somewhere for whatever reason, it sure is nice to have a good sturdy D-ring or equivalent on the front of said machine. The way this tractor's built, this thing we're welding to, it's just a, essentially a holder for a brush guard, but it's made out of half inch thick, actually I think a little more than that, steel plate, and it's bolted directly to a really, really sturdy subsection of the tractor that can definitely stand the load. So, you know, if you have a flimsy like brush guard or something, don't don't like weld it here and then try to pull stuff from the front of your machine, it'll be really bad. You have to be sure not only of what you're welding on but what's underneath it, but uh, this, it's structurally sound enough to do this. This tractor, what it uses are these. These are about an M16 or M18. They're a pretty large bolt. I'd say the uh, standard equivalent would be about three quarters of an inch um, width across here. It's a fine thread bolt. Fine thread bolts, here's your, here's your mechanical-ish lesson of the day. Fine thread bolts can survive a lot more force than their coarse threaded counterparts, generally speaking. The reason why coarse threaded bolts are so popular is because, uh, or rather more popular on a lot of applications, is they're a lot harder to mess up the threads. Oh, that is really on there. I don't know if I can get this off uh, without twisting the socket off of here. Alright, yeah, it's coming loose. If I had to guess, I'd say that's probably a good 150 foot-pounds of torque that somebody put on this. Uh, it's fairly important to not put the D-ring directly on what it's going on, so to speak, because if you put a plate between the D-ring, so you got the D-ring, the plate, and then your original steel, then when something pulls on that D-ring, what the plate does is it distributes that force. Instead of being distributed into a small area right here with the plate, it's, di it's distributed into a large area like around here. It's much easier on everything, reduces fatigue, reduces cracking. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. Now let's see what size we want to make this. be welding this in place with the help of some 8th inch 7018 stick electrodes which I've chosen for the ductile welds they produce and the fact that they tend to resist shock loading and vibration a lot better than several other types of welding out there. There you go, we went ahead and cleaned up all the spatter and the smoke and whatnot from the welding process and we finished this out with some color matched paint to stay as close to a factory look as possible. So I wanted to make this video in order to answer a bunch of questions that I've gotten about welding to these two machinery and the trucks and bumpers and whatnot over the years. So now we've discussed identifying a suitable component to weld these two, fitting up an intermediate plate to distribute the forces and why that's important and then the actual welding process a little bit itself. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Can't wait to try this out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.